Okay then, let's do this. Hello and welcome to this Thanksgiving Eve edition of AEW. I would say in a way a go home show because next week's folks, uh, winter is coming. Okay, winter is coming, and it will be winter by next week. I guess it w will be. So just remember, they gotta say that a whole bunch of times. Winter is coming, and a lot has to do on AEW when it, when it comes to this go home show for next week and whatnot. Uh, but we do kick it off first tonight with Hangman Page versus John Silver of the Dark Order. Now, listen, I bury the Dark Order a lot. I do. And they are mostly a job squad and whatnot. But I will give John Silver some credit in this. The man has personality, okay? So, in a way, he has potential. And I'm kind of someone making an exception. And they actually had a pretty good match with um uh, Hangman out there. Because, honestly, I don't know where Hangman's really been going anywhere right now. Since, you know, he lost that tournament to Omega back at full gear. So, basically, this was kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a showcase. Well, maybe in a way a showcase match for um Hangman Page and whatnot. Um, you know, he still picked the win over John Silver. But, you know, John Silver, he's, he's not bad, okay? Because... They are kind of giving him, giving him some go out there. And they actually did give him a little bit of time with Hangman. So, um, gotta, gotta give him credit. Like I said, I think a lot of those guys in that group are just background jobbers. Even my friend says what's going on with Grayson and Uno. They just kind of stand around, stand around like background characters. But, um, he... He he has potential, um, John Silva. So, the, the man has, the man has personality. I'm kind of giving him a pass on that but after the match the dark order came out and uh got john silver evil uno had the microphone then and listen uh we're not gonna jump you like we've done in the past and everything but listen you're one of the most popular groups of all time and now uh, you know as many times you want to leave they didn't want to let you go so it's not like a cult and um it's not what you think we are and we want to make an offer to join you but listen take your time you know where we are if you want to come find us. So, will Hangman join the Dark Order? I have no idea. Okay? I don't know. Uh, but, next, uh, as they pretty much went over the card uh, for tonight, uh, they did interview Kenny Omega, which, honestly, I think his promo was all over the place, talking about John Moxley and who attacked him last week, and that this is a... A gentleman's challenge, a wrestling match. You can leave your garbage wrestling at home. You have to beat me by pin or submission or choke me out. And, you know, I don't need garbage cans and whatnot. And, you know, um, there's some things you said last week. You want to congratulate him, but uh, you want to talk to your dad about your dad and everything. And he says, I don't think your dad wasn't that tough uh, at all. And he said his dad could beat the shit out of his dad. So <laughs> that sounds like a joke I would hear on South Park for some reason. My dad can beat your dad or on any type of TV show. Uh, that's what it looked like. But Omega's promo sometime, I, I don't know. It's not really the best promo cutter out there. He really is. I don't know how many times I got to go after that. Go over that. But, yeah. Um, Hangman uh, got the win right here in that match. Uh, next. Powerhouse Hobbs, we're calling him now. Not Willie Hobbs. Uh, we call him Powerhouse Hobbs, Hobbs, which I think my neighbor would actually be kind of happy with that because uh, <laughs> every time we say, like, Willie, Willie Hobbs sound like something uh, out the south or... Somebody said something with Dusty Rhodes would say, uh, with Hobbs, with, 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 with Hobbs, uh, something like that. So, but now they're calling him Powerhouse Hobbs, which is pretty cool. And his gear was different, basically at the Taz singlet, if you ask me, when he came out there. He destroyed Lee Johnson, uh, but then after that, Taz came out, and he told him to go celebrate. He had some business to take care of, and he had a problem with AEW net, um, you know, respecting the... The FTW Championship, which, you know, they're still trying to make this title still um, important for some reason. I just feel like this belt is just being carried around. It doesn't really mean anything. But now I guess they want to try to make it mean something. And he's sick of AEW disrespecting the lifestyle of it. And he's not going anywhere until somebody from management explains why this title isn't being taken seriously. And, you know, there's some tough people that's competed for this title. And it's not getting the time it deserves. They cut his microphone off microphone off then and he got another one and he dared um what tony khan and keith mitchell to turn off again a producer in the back because that will just go to the announce table you won't cut those mics off so they cut the mic off there then and then before he could leave cody came out with a headset so i guess he's producing this show too and you know out of respect you know you're wasting everybody's time and listen man we'll, we'll do the tag match next week we'll leave it in the ring okay and um yeah and whatnot but 
you got to go. And But, you know, Taz said he wanted some respect on the FTW title. He was stick, stick of the bullshit. And uh, Cody basically, listen, we'll run out the flagpole and uh, we'll deal with it later. And then Taz went on to say, is that, is that just basically saying creative has nothing for me or, you know, you know um, uh, wishing me well in my future endeavors? I had to say my first roadie. I'm sure that was a shot at the WWE. And then Cody came back and he had the FTW title and says, you know, you know, that title's everything uh, for you, isn't it, huh? And uh, what about your son, huh? Aren't you supposed to be training uh, him? Because your son's training with me right now, okay? And why is he not training with you? Taz basically got pissed off, says that, that's you're going too far right now. That was stupid. And before <laughs> before Taz could leave and Cody turned around, Taz basically hit the, uh, the Taz mission on him then. And, uh, you know, Billy Gunn and them came out for the save. And then I will say this. Uh, I marked out for the Taz mission. Now, I know some people may not be a fan of this whole work shoot angle. They were kind of going right here because, honestly, I don't know why they're still trying to make this FTW title important. Uh, it's not ECW anymore. It looked like ECW in this segment, but um, all of ECW. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, I don't even remember the FTW title, title back then. I know some people said that title was really that much this Taz carrying it around and whatnot but um but yeah it, it just looked like an ecw segment for some reason trying to get this ftw belt over it and trying to make it like a work shooting angle i'll admit i marked out for the taz mission because all i could you know remember and i'm sure a lot of people say it's jr say the taz mission the taz mission taz mission he's got the taz mission i, I wanted them to say that so bad taz mission taz mission the taz mission i was surprised taz even hit a freaking move out there i don't even know the last time he even hit a taz mission in general anybody just trying to choke cody rhodes out like t taz folks we haven't seen this guy wrestling i don't know how long and all of a sudden, he just hitting Taz missions on Cody. Oh, was it gonna be Cody versus Taz mission uh, versus Taz next week? Uh, I I don't know, but I I did enjoy that part a lot though. So I, I marked that when Taz hit the Taz mission. Uh, like I said, the work shoot angle to try to go to um, I'm up and down on it. Like I said, some say they're just trying to make it too real when it's not. And then you know what's funny is that after Taz hit it, Taz's son just comes out of nowhere and just walks behind him then holding the FTW title then. So, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Eddie Kingston was being interviewed um, and went out until John Moxley sh uh, showed up trying to wonder if, if it was him that attacked him. Kingston stared him down like, listen, man, it wasn't me. You know who it was. But I got my own business to handle right now. And so do you. All right? And basically, they both walked off. And, you know, Kingston said trying to uh, mess with my feng shui. Uh, next, top flight. Versus the hybrid two. Um, this was a good match. Uh, type top flight. Uh, they, they're a good team. I know they knew it's like what I don't know how long they've been here, but it was like their second week on TV and whatnot. Uh, these guys are real good. Like I said, for a little green, but they have potential. Um, you know, going against the hybrid two, you were gonna see a very high spot match out there because um. My friend Kyle said he likes these guys, but he felt like it was, this whole match was high spot after high spot after high spot. Yes, it was. It was pretty spotty out there. I thought it was still a, you know, good match and everything. And, um, you know, the, what the hybrid two ended up beating top flight and whatnot. And uh, basically then they started beating up one of them as one of the submission in. Uh, the Young Bucks came for the save, which I don't know if they're trying to give um, hybrid two a, a push. Listen, I like Jack Evans. I like... And Helico, and I would like to believe it'd be some type of push that's going to be going for these guys, but I don't know. Given that the hybrid two have barely done anything in general, now they want to try to make them into something. I don't know. Hopefully they can, but I don't know if it will. Um, don't know if it'll work with an ad. Okay, not really sure. Like I said, top flight though. Uh, I like top flight. Uh, it's a pretty good team. They have potential. So. Um, I'm liking them more and more as I've seen them on. So they, they are they are good, all right? Uh, next, I know they have Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose talking about nepotism and talking about Brandy and everything and that Jay Gargill, Jay Gargill was there, you know, just take out um, Brandy and everything. And um, I don't know, they're just going to take him out and whatnot. Uh, next, uh, FTR said they were going back for the titles. 
SCU, Kazarian, and Christopher Daniels went against Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. This is the first time that Chris Jericho and Christopher Daniels have ever been in a ring and that both men have over 50 years experience in the wrestling business and whatnot of how long they've been in wrestling in general. I'm surprised Jericho and uh, Daniels were never in a ring together uh, in this tag match. A good tag match, I would say. Of course, all the under, other inner circle members were out there somewhat getting involved and whatnot. But I actually liked this. It was actually okay. Uh, Daniels ended up hitting a BME on the Jericho. Um, I think it was on the Jericho, or but you know, he kicked out everything. Uh, MJF ended up punching Daniels with the dynamite diamond he had in his hand, and uh, Jericho hit the Judas effect, and Hager got the win, picking up the scrap stand after that. Not bad of a tag match, I'll say. Um, it's okay, I'll say that. Like I said before, Jericho and uh, Daniels in the ring, that was not bad, okay. I guess they want to try to make the inner circle serious again. I'm going to hope they do. They've been too much more of a comedy act, really, than they were top heels at one point. I would hope. I'm not really sure. But um, the tag match was not um, not bad. And then right after uh, what the inner circle ended up beating up, beating up um, Kazarian and everything and Daniels before Scorpio Scott could come out with a steel chair for the save and whatnot. Next, I know they had Miro and Kip Sabian doing some video game thing in the back. Basically, it's the new Xbox, the Xbox Series X, and um, which you know I will get at one point, um, hopefully, and the PS5. Uh, but you know, Orange Cassidy ended up coming in, turning it down. Miro broke, came out, said so my wife bought me. That. I think he owns both consoles, anyways. And then it was like a brawl right after with them and the best friends, and I don't know they threw Kip Sabian like a portable toilet and. Miro's shaking the camera, and I don't know, man. I don't really care about this feud. The only thing I really even cared about in that whole segment was just the new Xbox. I was just kind of glad to see the new Xbox. I couldn't care either less about any of these guys right now. This feud is dumb, and I just could have swear Miro's supposed to be doing some bachelor party for um, Kip Sabian. Whatever happened to that, did that just disappear or something? So, I don't know. Uh, next day, we're going to do a contract signing again between John Moxley and... Um, Kenny Omega, of course, Omega's over the top, uh, you know, um, entrance. Have to, uh, of course, mention Meltzer since he's on the payroll in the Wrestling Observer because it's on the payroll. And John Moxley ended up beating him up before the entrance even happened. He threw him through the tarp and uh, got him into the ring, hit him with a death rider onto the belt. And then Moxley said, you know, it wasn't true who you hired and everything, but they did a piss poor job because I'm still walking. And, you know, he wants to hit anybody, and he will, uh, you better you know, hook him up and, you know, find some professionals in Philadelphia and whatnot, because uh, it's not going to work to take me out. And Moxie basically told Kenny, you, know, you better dig deep and find the old Kenny Omega, the cleaner, the best bow, whatever you were at one point, because says, I'm going to beat you, win, lose, or draw, winter is coming, okay? And, you know, it's going to be a big title match December the 2nd. He says, I love this shit. And um, he said, it's not a game. It's not going to be any more jokes on BTE. No dancing girls. No brooms. This is real life. And you better not miss. He put his hand up with the gun side. Steady hand. aim because fire. Because you only getting one shot at this. Okay. Moxie, of course, straight fire is on the promo as usual, which you can barely say anything bad about him because, come on, the guy is just on a different level right now. He's better than Omega on on um on the microphone. I'll say that. Uh, so Moxie's promo game is just straight up fire right now. Now I do think he may be losing the title next week because, as he says, he's been undefeated for over what 18 months, and they wouldn't just have Omega go through a whole freaking tournament. Uh, just to have him lose to Moxie. I actually thought they were gonna wait till uh, what Revolution do this, but no. And uh, I would not be surprised though um, if Omega wins the title next week. I think that's gonna happen though. At this winter is coming, folks. Winter's coming. Okay, winter is coming. Remember that. Uh, they didn't went back to the Inner Circle. Uh, Chris Jericho. As he talked about being sucker punched by Kazarian tonight. And then next week, he's going to make him famous next week for what he did in MJF. So he's going to teach him about humility. Next, they had a video package for Anna J and Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's Championship. I forgot this was even for the title. I forgot about their promo last week. Um, at least they had a video package, but... I didn't even remember the promo they did all the week. I didn't know it was for the title, honestly. And, and you know, the, the thing about this match, I don't know if it felt like five minutes or ten minutes, but, um, and the match was okay, at least somewhat passable in a way. 
Um, I, I don't know. And N and J's not bad or anything, or 99 or whatnot. But this match felt like five minutes, and that's going through the commercial too. I know it said eight minutes, and that depending on how you watch it, it felt long or short. It felt very short to me. I felt like this match was like five to four minutes, and it was going to be Sheeta winning anyways. It's not like she was ever going to lose. Uh, the title, and honestly, this match was kind of whatever anyway, especially for a title match. Listen, the NWA one did way better last week. Hell, NXT hit out the fucking ballpark last week with their women's match. Again, with the AEW women's title, still bad. And then, next thing you know, they had Abaddon show up. Uh, basically, this is the discount version of Sue Young or discount version of Rosemary. They didn't, um, Al Snow bury the fuck out of ass, if I remember, which I don't really blame him for. Uh, good on him for that. I've heard a lot more bad about Abalon, Ab- Abalon, Abaddon, honestly. But, uh, yeah, this is just basically another version, uh, like just a discount version of Soon Young. Why did she even get a title shot for anyways? Because, A, didn't, the only time she ever really was on TV was when she debuted on TV. So, I don't know why they, I don't know. I feel like they're just throwing anybody at Akaro Shida because A, they really don't have any challenges for her. And B, we're just throwing anything at the wall and hope to God that it sticks, okay? So, not nothing I really would be looking for and whatnot. So, I don't know. Yeah, discount Sue Young versus Akaro Shida. Nah, not really. Or even discount Rosemary. I, I don't know, man. I don't know a lot about Avalon. I just know before either Al Snow, Barry, there or some other stuff, okay? Um,. But moving on from this um, women's match thing, Matt Hardy, who was more of a broken, not broken, but uh, more of the big money Matt himself, uh, you know, Jewish human Matt Hardy, as he talked about um, he's going to be in the Battle Royale next week, and that he survived this difficult week. Difficult year, and you know, can't the odds to beat um, Sammy Guevara? So next week, he has something to prove. Death Triangle, though, um, Pac and Phoenix went against the Butcher and the Blade. Yeah, I'll say this about the Butcher and the Blade. Listen, I know these guys have been called job guys before many times and still currently are. I will give this them straight. They have been putting some work in. I'll give them that. Even my other friend called Blade a freaking workhorse right now. Yes, the Butcher and the Blade have been putting in work. I'll give them that. But I like I said, they got to at least get some wins and take more L's. And they got to win tonight, mostly thanks to Eddie uh, Kingston. But I mean, get some wins on their own merit and whatnot. So, this wasn't a um, bad match and everything. So, like I said, I'm trying not to call them job guys all the way. But um, they do, still need to win some matches. But uh, not, not bad from these two out here. But it ended up with, um, what, Phoenix going to the top rope. Eddie Kingston knocking them off. Um, and whatnot, which gave the Butcher and the Blade hit their, uh, finishing in, but right after, there was a chair in the ring, and, uh, Kings ended up DDTing, Pac on the both of those chairs, Lance Archer showed up then for some out of the blue reason, and helped Phoenix and them take out the Butcher and the Blade and Eddie Kingston, as he basically stood, stood, stared them down him as they left off and whatnot. Why Archer's in this, I don't know. Honestly, I feel like they have had nothing better for Archer to do ever since he lost the title to Moxley for the second time. So, I guess they found something for him to do. Okay, they found something for him. And they're going to put... out and see from that okay but other than that though uh that's my review of dynamite this week we will be back next week for winter is coming and whatnot winter is coming folks but not a bad show from the contract signing i'll say hangman and silver wasn't bad main event was pretty good with archer being a surprise i have no idea where it's going but i guess we will see week is probably the show honestly it's almost usual at this point the women's match between uh what sheeta and Anna J, I just felt it felt very short and didn't really go anywhere in general. Um, like I said, a lot of good promo. The work shoot thing with Cody and Taz, you can go 50-50 up on that if you want. I like Starks' promo, I forgot to mention. I swear they were standing either in front of a green screen or they were standing in front of a chateau. But I think they were in front of a green screen, as my friend would tell me too, okay? Um, 
what else? Um, that's all I can really say about the show. You know, Powerhouse Hobbs, that name change and whatnot. So, not a lot of bad stuff. I thought Jericho and them was pretty good, too, uh, for what it was. So, not a bad show, okay? Uh, but, yes, winter is coming next week. So, we will see what happens on December the 2nd. But, other than that, uh, hopefully everybody has a happy holiday out there. Uh, Thanksgiving of whatever you do tomorrow and whatnot or day off or whatever. Just have a uh, safe holiday tomorrow and uh, I will be back later for an NXT review. So see you later. Peace.